it feels like 21 degrees right now, 32 at game time. Kelly, you played the position at the highest level in the NFL. You played at Colorado State. I imagine you had some weather games there. Yeah. What does wind do to the way you have to throw a football? Yeah, no question. I, I think that throwing the ball in particular in this wind is certainly different. And the wind's coming out of the northwest, and it is going to be a factor. And it's particularly with Geno Smith, it seemed like it affects him more when the wind is at his back. And we, I was watching him in warm-up. We saw him at Oklahoma State. He's not comfortable. When the ball wobbles, obviously, there's more surface area affected by the wind. The tight spiral right there is going to be better for him. But particularly when the wind is at his back, the ball is driven downfield further. The nose gets held up in the air, and Gino seems bothered by things like that. Let's point out that he grew up in South Florida. He went to high school in Miramar, which is straddling the Broward and Dade County lines. Yeah. And this is obviously not a day that he is used to, even though he's been in West Virginia for a while. They get the cold in West Virginia, of course, but they don't get this kind of wind. So we'll see how he handles it today. Dana Holgerson actually spent some of his, of his youth not far from here in Iowa. And his team will kick off first. And Iowa State won the toss and chose to receive. And speaking of growing up in Iowa, Paul Rhodes, literally just down the road, is a product. This is a homecoming job for him, and he has reignited the passion of the Iowa State football fans. Yeah, and I guarantee you, Paul Rhodes loves this weather. He's a defensive-minded coach, and that's the way he has built his program. Yeah, absolutely. The worse, the better for that guy. And, of course, West Virginia fans know the name Paul Rhodes of his days, a defensive coordinator for Pitt back when there was such a thing as the backyard brawl. I knew you were going to start bringing that up. That's not a very good memory if they hearken back to 2007 when he ruined well, the title he, shot particularly. His players ruined it. His yes. plan, his game plan yes. ruined it. Yeah, they, they, that was a remarkable effort. They were not supposed to win that game. Yeah, you need to play nice the rest of the day. The West Virginia fans did not need reminded of that. Well, that's what I do. This is the first time these teams have ever met. And, of course, it'll become a regular in the Big 12 Conference. Tyler Bittenkurt to kick it off to Jarvis West there, number one. West Virginia, 105th in the nation at kickoff return defense, but Iowa State hasn't busted very many long ones. This will be West. He's not even going to bust anything. That, by the way, is where the wind is blowing from left to right and steadily, and it will be here all afternoon. Really don't expect to see any let up until nightfall. So here comes Sam Richardson. The redshirt freshman, this will be his first start in college. He played all last yeah. year, and he is the third quarterback that Paul Rhodes has gone to so far. And it's different coming in a release situation as opposed to starting. When the game plan is centered around what you do, the week looks a lot different than if you're just coming in in a mop-up type situation. The tailback is Chantrell Johnson, a junior from Orlando. That's very close to Winter Park, where Sam Richardson comes from. And this will be Johnson trying to get to the edge in West Virginia right there to make sure nothing good happens for Iowa State. We have a flag down back at the 20-yard line. Carl Joseph, the number one solo tackler, and Isaiah Bruce. And here's referee Reggie Smith. Holding offense number 71. A 10-yard penalty for P first down. So they're going to back him up, take the penalty, and make it first down and long. And Dave, I think that's going to be very important for Iowa State. If you look at them schematically on the offensive side, they want to run the football and then play action pass. That obviously does not work when you're behind schedule and down in distance like they are right here already to start this game. First down and 20. Stay on the ground. Johnson getting outside the 15. Narwin Cook, safety coming up, gain of a couple of yards. So it'll be second down and 18 for the Cyclones, who are kind of an oddity in the Big 12, Kelly. They're not an explosive offensive team. No, they really aren't. And that's, I think, somewhat the, the personality of the head coach, a defensive-minded Paul Rhodes, kind of builds his offense like that as, as well. Richardson, decent runner, and he's got some room. 
Trying to get out of bounds. He got about his, the maximum amount of yardage out of that. Out of bounds and around the 29 yard line, setting up third down and about six, a manageable opportunity for Iowa State. And actually, early in the game, this is a great decision. You can see right there, there isn't anyone open, and then a good decision by a quarterback early is just hang on to the ball, get as much as you can, and they're in a third and somewhat manageable situation right here. Looking first to the middle of the field, swings it out to Johnson, and he'll be just short. Did not make it. So fourth down and a yard or so in Iowa State, and this is a player to watch. Number 13, Kirby Vanderkamp, a Ray Guy semifinalist, the punter position. Didn't make the final three, but he is incredible, almost a punting scientist. And remember, he's going to be punting into the wind, so it, it probably is going to be directional, and it should be a low-line drive as well. Avon Austin awaits at the left-footed punt. Not bad. Into that breeze, and he gets a little bit of an extra roll on it, but let's take a look at where they're going to finally mark it out at the 33-yard line. That's a 33-yard punt. That's not bad at all. So here comes the senior from South Florida, Miramar, Florida, Geno Smith. 336 passing yards, number three in the nation in passing. 35 touchdowns, five interceptions, yet somehow those numbers, and he's not in the Heisman race anymore. Yeah, that's exactly the best evidence that you can see that the Heisman is no longer about the best player in the country. It's about the best player having a great year on the right team in the country because Geno Smith's numbers deserve to be at least in the top five. going to throw with the wind at his back right away going deep down the field and he misses at the 33 yard line trying to get it to J.D. Woods and Woods had a step on the Iowa State secondary. That is our note to tell you about our impact players for West Virginia brought to us by Chick-fil-A. And we talked about Austin and Bailey at the top. Bailey's that go-to receiver vertically and, and then Austin's going to get the ball all over the face. Josh Francis is the defensive player for West Virginia that is a disruptor. He has to get Iowa State in negative situations today. Austin out of the back field now number one keep an eye on him all day long pass near the mark but Bailey making the grab that's his 89th catch of the year Kenneth Lynn drove him out of bounds and here are the Iowa State impact players brought to us by Chick-fil-A yeah 47 AJ Klein the leading tackler on that team is a tremendous player Givens leads the nation in takeaways and we've already seen Vanderkamp he's going to have a huge impact on this game today in this weather Sean Alston maybe as healthy as he's been all season number 20 in the backfield to the left of Geno Smith. That's Austin on third and five, and he'll have a first down. Austin has been battling the effects of a debilitating thigh bruise. He picks up nine, and we were told this is about as healthy as he has been in months. Yeah, getting third and manageable, and the delayed draw right there to Alston. And he was the guy that was supposed to be the workhorse to start the year, but you're right, Dave, he's been banged up. If he's healthy, that's just one more dimension for West Virginia that simply is here is Tavon Austin out of the backfield, and he has hit at the 50-yard line, fell forward maybe into Iowa State territory at the 49. Jeremiah George, who had 17 tackles in Iowa State's game against Oklahoma, in there on the stop, and a different look for Iowa State, and West Virginia moving quickly. Second and seven. Austin stays in the backfield. He's available. Geno Smith can't see him right now. Geno's going to take off. He'll certainly have a first down, and he'll slide safely at around the 31-yard line. Geno Smith is not a run-first quarterback, but he gashes Iowa State for 17 and a first down. You know what I think is Geno Smith's feet are actually underrated, but he typically moves to throw it, not moves to run. And right here, Iowa State is just in a man-to-man -man defensively. And once the quarterback breaks contain, gets outside the pocket, all those defenders are downfield with receivers. Flag down. False start coming against the Mountaineers. False start. Offense number 67, a five yard penalty, it's first down. And Dave, to just talk about Iowa State defensively, they give up a lot of yards between the 20s, but when you get into that plus territory, they heat you up a little bit more, the blitzes go way up, but they're very, very sound in the red zone. One of the best red zone defenses in the country, it's almost as if they flip a switch. 
six to snap it. And we've got more flags down. Hold everything. You got a good look at Tavon Austin and his breakability, but. Prior to the snap, full start. Offense number 67. Five yard penalty. It's first down. That's two, said Dana Holgerson, but I don't know if he's yelling at his line or the officials. Yeah, it's hard, to, it's hard to tell, but once again, this is exactly what West Virginia's been doing. They get a lot of yards, but they have those drive-killing mental mistakes, and we've seen two of them in a row right on this drive. Now, first down at 20. Smith gets it out a little bit high, trying to get it to Bailey. It'll be second down and 20. Good coverage, though. A.J. Klein, the outstanding Iowa State linebacker, number 47, was hanging around. And Iowa State is getting some good early pressure, but the coverage downfield is also very, very good. You can see Bailey coming underneath, and it's really a route that's meant more against man-to-man. -man. They get his own that time, and Geno Smith just throws an inaccurate pass. Austin back in the backfield, and he has it, and he has room. And look out here, because Tavon Austin in an open field is absolutely unbelievable. He stepped out of bounds, shy of the first down, back at the 25-yard line, but that's a 17-yard gain. It's third and three. And Tavon Austin is not a yards-after-contact guy. He's an incredibly quick, fast guy that makes a lot of defenders look really silly out in space. He's a guy that will do dynamic things today. Absolutely jumps off the screen when you watch him. You're breaking down tape on this offense. Unbelievable. A lot of motion. What happened there? Bailey came closer to Geno Smith, who fired it yards over his head. An interesting coaching decision coming up here, but Bittenkirk's going to get an opportunity on fourth and three. I thought West Virginia would consider going for it, but they're going to go ahead and use this wind at their back. This will be a 42-yard kick. And I think this is exactly where you want to use the wind, and most field goal kickers can drive this link home in this 20-mile-an-hour wind. You can hear the thud. He nailed that and certainly gets a little assist from the wind as well. So West Virginia hurts themselves with some penalties but winds up putting three state going into the wind. We'll have the ball next. Oh my gosh, showdown Saturday, are you kidding? On ABC, a trifecta of games, well, he's not playing, but these guys, these matchups are ridiculous. At noon, Urban Meyer trying to cap off his undefeated season as they welcome Michigan. At 3.30, Will Muschamp and the Gators, Jimbo Fisher, number 10, nice. Seminoles. People in Florida think Florida's going to play in the BCS championship game. I want yeah. you to know that right now. And there's some genuine hate there. That isn't oh, no, made up stuff. Oh, they man. just don't like each other. Anyone on that screen right there just absolutely can't stand the other guy. And a lot of people think of Notre Dame and Mate Teo win that game tonight. It's going to be a tough one. The national I'm title. calling it right now. That's going to be an incredibly Even without tough Matt one. Parker? Absolutely. All no right. question. All right. The signal for Jarvis West is to take a knee, so it'll be the 25-yard line for Iowa State and the redshirt freshman quarterback, Sam Richardson. They hit him quietly. Iowa State's offense got off the field, right? That's exactly the way they play defense. They give up some first downs, they give up some yards, and they just simply keep people out of the end zone. It's amazing how that happens, but it's by design. Richardson got into this position starting in this game with an interesting coming off the bench performance against Kansas. Steel Jantz took a shot to the head and ended up not being able to finish the game. Richardson not only finished it, he finished it so well that he earned the starting job. Chantrell Johnson and James White in the backfield. White is number eight, Johnson 21, and that's going to be... First short shot out. Iowa State. Well, that's a little bit of a surprise to come off the kickoff and not be ready to snap the ball. And private company research and training and development of products and discovery and all of that. Pretty cool. You have to be able to train quarterbacks like that. Would that be defenses? Nice? I think that would work perfectly. But just do it indoors as you see by what the weather feels like today. Richardson on first and ten going to take a deep shot down the field. It's going to be incomplete throwing into the wind, and that's going to draw a flag. A little bit of contact. Quentin Bundridge was the intended receiver, and that's Pat Miller in coverage. 
Pass interference. Defense, number six. A 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. All right, you mentioned Sam Richardson last week. They went up on senior night against Kansas in an inspired effort early on by Kansas, but Kelly, he lit him up. He did, and he throws a really good ball. He's tremendously accurate. Doesn't have an overly strong arm, but he seems to have a really good grasp of this offense, and it's just... His opportunity to take it and run with it. And speaking of taking it and run with it, that's James White for a gain of seven to about the 47-yard line before Shaq Petaway, a sophomore from Steubenville, Ohio, number 36 for West Virginia, in on the stop. And now Iowa State trying to play quickly. Second down and three. Keep it on the ground, first down, and a saving tackle that time. Into Iowa State territory after a pickup by five. But if that tackle is not made by Darwin Cook, it could be big. And the quarterback zone read, and this is something that you don't really see out of the youngsters. Richardson isn't known for his mobility, but he can handle that part of the offense here today. And back to White again, and this time he's hauled down from behind by George Wright. A one-time nose tackle, number 99, sniffed that play out. That's going to be a loss of three back to midfield, second down and 13. Wright doing a very good job of being active up front, getting off right over the center and then creating the negative play, and that's going to be huge for West Virginia today. If they can get Iowa State behind the sticks and force Richardson to make plays in the passing game, they have an opportunity to do well this afternoon. That's his fifth tackle for a loss this season. They stay on the ground. This time the hole opens up for White, and there is Cook again. Ball came out. What's the ruling on the field? West Virginia ball. It was Cook who forced the fumble. And I think Tufty, the left guard, is going to get called for hold well behind the play. So I think this fumble is going to stand. Well, let's see if it's really a fumble. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by West Virginia. During the play, holding offense number 64 is declined. Result of the play first down. Yeah, I think this is going to be not only reviewed as all plays are, but it's going to be overturned. I think James White knee was definitely the down. Of a fumble is under further review. It should be. The fumble was recovered by 28 Terrence Garvin. Darwin Cook, though, that's the second time he has tackled White before White was going to explode. And so we're going to take a couple of looks at this. And I agree with you completely, Kelly. I do believe that his knee was down before the ball came out. A very good tackle by Cook coming up there and run support out of the secondary, but I think you're right. I think the knee's down, ball's in possession. I think this is going to be overturned. And in the meantime, Iowa State had a holding penalty. Tufty, the left tackle, got hold, called for hold. He declined it. So if this is overturned, do they get it? go back and rethink that through? <laughs> That's why Dan Olgerson makes the coaching salary. Because you obviously want to take the holding penalty if, if that ball is going to be down before the fumble. I'm actually surprised they even bothered to ask with that, you know, no, having to figure this was going to be reviewed by the booth or possibly even challenged. After further review, the ball carrier was down by rule. However, the foul for holding offense number 64. A 10-yard penalty repeats second down. Yeah, now, of course, it's as if the play was just a simple holding exactly. penalty. So back them up they go. Both teams a little sloppy with penalties early. West Virginia messed up their last drive, their first drive, with two false start penalties in a row. And now Iowa State gets popped all the way back to the 40-yard line, their own 40-yard line. Looking for 64. I'm not sure exactly where 64 disappeared to, to be honest with you. He was actually already on the ground, the left guard, and he's tough to hear exactly right. He's the one that got called for the hole. Richardson in trouble, and he's going to be hurled down right at the 40-yard line by Josh Francis, one of our impact players. No gain on the play, the senior from Damascus, Maryland, and it's going to be third down at 23 for the Cyclones. And obviously, if you're Iowa State right here with a redshirt freshman in his first start, as Richardson is, you want to be very, very careful early in the game, well behind the chain. Throwing into that breeze, too. 
and not really a breeze would be too polite of a way to describe this win. Got some room. Goes underneath, and it's a smart play. Chris Young will get it back into West Virginia territory, short of the first down of the 45-yard line by eight, but it's still a gain of 15, and that's a smart play by the redshirt freshman. It really is, and I think it was good signs on the horizon. He made a really good decision, moved up in the pocket a little bit, and had really good protection. So those are a sign of good things to come, but we'll see if Vanderkamp could get his job done right here. And there's Tavon Austin, who has returned one for 76 yards and a touchdown, but Kirby Vanderkamp has put 27 punts inside the 20 yard line. High Sun and Austin makes the fair catch inside the 10 yard line. So Vanderkamp having an impact early in this game. West Virginia's got a long way to go. Did you see Tavon Austin last week? A school record 344 yards on the ground. 21 carries. It's a big 12 record. 572 all purpose yards. Ran for two touchdowns. And yet, West Virginia lost the game to Oklahoma 50 to 49. They had a missed PAT and a two point conversion went off the hands of Stedman Bailey in that game, too, in the second half that may or may not have made a huge difference in the game. In the meantime, Austin in a position where West Virginia fans don't want to see him off the field. From the eight yard line following the Vanderkamp punt, it's power football. And look at Alston get going here. The senior from Hampton, Virginia, who got off to such a fine start, gains 12, got hurt, and it struggled since we saw West Virginia two weeks ago, and Alston barely played. And at almost 240 pounds, Alston gives them a dimension that this offense typically doesn't have a true kind of one cut and downhill thumper in that zone running scheme and you saw it on that play right down Main Street. That's spiked to the ground by David Irving, a player the Iowa State coaches said have really come on this season. The junior from San Jacinto, California, it's second down at 10. And Iowa State does not get a lot of pressure in terms of pressure numbers, tackle for loss, and sacks. But just getting across the line of scrimmage and getting in the, the way of a screen game will be a huge deal for defensive ends from Iowa State here today. That was close. If he grabs that, he's in the end zone. So they go back to the ground. Austin. And he's short of the first down by about three. It'll be third down coming up. Gage Schaefer, Schaefer number 16 for the Cyclones in on the stop. But you just every time he gets the ball. I mean, it is absolutely electric to watch him. Incredibly quick feed, and he's not going to break tackles, but he makes people miss, and he gets through really, really skinny places in between the tackles as well. Third down and four. Little touch pass here. And that's going to be a first down. And there's Tavon Austin, gain of five. This is a play we're starting to see a little bit more yeah. of in college football. They actually call this a lot of times a forward pass as opposed to a handoff. And if the quarterback possesses it where he can control it for any length of time, it's a forward pass. But the bottom line in it way is any way you can get it to number one, it's good with us. Be interesting to see if Dana Holgerson sticks to his promise and holds Austin to about 15 carries. Forget about that. Okay. He had, and which is we're not calling Dana a liar. We're just saying he may be changing his mind. Underneath, this is J.D. Woods and a good effort by Woods fighting with Cliff Stokes, the cornerback out of Tallahassee, Florida, and he is pretty close. Now they did give him the first down. That was a great individual effort by the redshirt senior. Well, the one question we had is how is Iowa State going to defend? We'll check the spot right at the very end. It seemed like a very good mark like you talked about. I think you got it. Yeah, I think you're right. And the officials agree with us. A lot of movement on this play, and it's a short pass. And this is Andrew Bowie, and he'll pick up about eight. The other West Virginia running back we expect to see get the ball today, Cleon Lang and A.J. Klein on the stop for Iowa State. But that is a pickup of about seven. That looked like something out of the... Daughter's pregame weave. Yeah, movement all over the place and two running backs in at this point in time. Olsen back in there again is the pounder going downhill. And it's Alston. He'll have a first down. 
And he will take it to the 43 yard line of Iowa State. A solid pickup of six. Jeremiah George, the junior from Clearwater, who's taken A.J. Klein's middle linebacker position while Klein has shifted over to the weak side where Jake Knott had been until shoulder surgery ended his outstanding career here at Iowa State. And certainly, uh, hopefully, he'll get an opportunity at the NFL. Yeah, and what a huge loss that was. Really the leader on the defensive side. And you take another great linebacker. Klein has to go out of his position to go to the weak side because there's more expected from that weak side position in this defense. Tavon Austin in the slot off to the left. And they go the other direction. And it's Woods one more time, short of the first down. Pickup of eight, however, so a couple to go for a first down for the Mountaineers. Very interesting. They're not pitching it all over the field going down deep, Kelly. They're just going with what's in front of them. Smith now four out of five on this drive. And I think that has a little bit to do with the wind at Geno Smith's back. I don't think he's comfortable throwing the ball downfield. And I think what you have to do is dink and dunk and get your quarterback comfortable on the day. Hole opens up. First down for West Virginia. And that's Andrew Bowie, the sophomore from Jacksonville. And if you're hearing a lot of Florida names on here, 46 players combined on these rosters from the state of Florida. What's really interesting right now is West Virginia has a nice mix in the backfield. They have the pounder in Austin at 240. Bowie's somewhere in between, and then they have Austin that can take the ball and run anywhere with it with big play potential. Tenth play of the drive right here. All day for Smith takes the option and it's incomplete Woods near the first down marker unable to make the grab it'll be second down and 10 and you can see right there number 47 AJ Klein the linebacker was talking to the defensive backs Cliff Stokes number seven they have to work together to seal off that throw and Klein was underneath it but when the receiver repositioned the defensive back has to close that gap and the veteran linebacker didn't like what Stokes did. And this time he is swallowed up back at the 30-yard line. It looks like Walker Woods, number 95, on the stop for a loss of two. And what you have to do is you have to get going really, excuse me, it's over here, get going really quickly to stop a dynamic running back with quick feet. Essentially, you have to stop him before he gets started. That's great defensive work. They're going to have to have that out of the down four guys here this afternoon. They're down at 13. Underneath, it's Woods, no chance. Sniffed out right away by the Iowa State defense. Cleon Lang, number 90 in there. Jacquez Washington, too, number 10. If Bailey wasn't getting loose outside, you throw the tunnel screen to actually Woods trying to come back inside. But once again, very good positional defense from Iowa State. And that's what they're known for. Alignment, assignment, sound. See the ball break on it and make a very good tackle. That's all about Iowa State defense. For Bittenkurt, who's one for one. Eight out of 14 on the year. This from 46. And negative, rejected by the left upright. Paul Rhodes celebrating his defense holds. Now this was a low kick. You'd like to think you get this thing up in the air when you got the wind at your back, but it's tough to kick him high from a long distance. Yeah, obviously the distance has nothing to do with it, but you're right. He just drove it a little bit to the left, pushed it just a little bit, but once again, how about Iowa State's defense? Any way you can keep the opposition, especially when it's West Virginia's prolific offense, out of the end zone. And Rhodes, remember his defensive coordinating background. That's a reverse Tony Sperano right there. You're exactly right, but the emotion of a defensive-minded head coach knowing how to keep points off the board. Chantrell Johnson. Now, Paul Rhodes is delighted with that, but he's got to wonder when his offense is going to get in gear. That's about a five-yard pickup straight ahead for Johnson. You see Jared Barber, 33, among the tacklers. Shaq Rowell as well, number 90. Well, your point about the offense getting untracked is, is well noted because that's why Richardson is in the game. Give them the chance to get the most points on the board this afternoon. Little confusion there. Richardson spinning out and turned a zero play into a couple of yards before Rowell again in there on the stop. Or Rowell, pardon me, number 90, the junior from Maple Heights, Ohio. That was an awkward-looking zone read play. So it's third down, though, in a couple. 
And Rao, one of those defensive linemen. Remember, West Virginia plays a 3-3 defense. Essentially, they have their nickel defense in the game all the time, but only three down linemen. Rao, that nose tackle has to be very active today. Richardson's got the edge if he wants it. Can he get to the marker? He can. A first down for Richardson on the ground. Ten-yard gain. Once again, a young quarterback making a very good decision. Essentially, his progression down the field is one receiver, two receiver, and the next option is just to run the football, and he's making very nice decision, moving the chains early in this game. Jeff Woody is now in the ball game. He gets it. And the fullback, they're not booing, they're yelling Woody. He got about three yards there. A junior from Pleasant Hill, Iowa, Josh Francis on the stop. Richardson, you mentioned the decisions. He's now run the ball four times for 23 yards. And you can see he has pretty decent mobility. They they actually have a package in the run game where the, it's designed quarterback keeps, but his plays have come off of really good decisions in the pass game. Is he going to bleed the clock or snap it right before the end of the quarter? And that should be the end of the quarter. Prior to the snap, that's the expiration of the first period. And also the end of it as well. Reggie Smith, an erudite official. Oh, the music here is unbelievable. The presentation of college football presented by Kate Jewelers will continue after this message and a word from our ABC station. Senior day here in Ames, Iowa, on the Iowa State campus. There's quarterback Steele Jans, who's not starting, did not start the game. Jake McDonough did, the outstanding nose guard, who had a battle with celiac disease. And then the tremendous linebacker, A.J. Klein. And finally, Jake Knott. And you see, unable to play since he had shoulder surgery following the Baylor game. So what does he do? He straps on a headset and helps coach. But he's working with the defense right now. Iowa State has the football as we start the second quarter, second down and seven. And yes, it's a Big 12 game, and it's 3-0. Straight ahead, Jeff Woody right to the 50-yard line. So let's remind everybody very quickly what the win situation is here in Ames. In the first quarter, Iowa State was going into the wind, which is coming out of the northwest. That's what those flags will look like for the rest of the afternoon. Now they've got the wind at their back. And you see, feels like 17 degrees, and those gusts of 32 are frequent. Chantrell Johnson in the backfield now, 21. Underneath, well, he had a receiver open at the sticks and instead goes over that, and Josh Lenz, the senior, made a great catch. 15-yard pickup and a first down to the Mountaineer 35-yard line. Richardson gets away with one here. The smash route, which is a receiver underneath, lends on the court on the corner route, and you're absolutely right. Banks number 34 had a great opportunity to pick that ball off. Richardson was very fortunate on that pass. Griffin the third yesterday and figured I can just throw the ball anywhere. He was quite hot, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, I think he was pretty good. And this is Johnson, and he is enveloped by Wright back at the 39-yard line. Second tackle for a loss for the big redshirt senior from Miami. A loss of four there. Second down and 14. The defensive tackles are having a great start to this game, and they're the ones that's forcing negative plays and getting Iowa State out of their comfort zone behind the sticks as they are once again right here. They gave him a yard, so it's actually second and 13. like a screen pass but Richardson's first choice was we got a West Virginia player injured at the 40 yard line Richardson. and Richardson was able to get to the 34 yard line that's Ismail Banks a redshirt sophomore from Richmond and his injury and his inability to finish the play is one of the reasons Richardson was able to gain yards because he ran right by Banks and Banks put his hand up almost immediately that he needed some help to get off the field hopefully he will be able to walk up under his own power and Ismail Banks able to get up with some help. And Kelly, take us through what happened to him here. 
You can see him right there. Banks is going to come in, and Gary just throws low, which is legal, as long as you're going to the sideline. And then it just looked like it actually not the leg he was hit on, but the next step something happened with his knee as Iowa State was trying to get the tunnel screen underway. So in the shadows, which are just about taken over this field, that last little strip of sunshine up there, the top of your screen. Third and nine for Richardson. He's run successfully today, and he's going to tuck it, but he's got company this time, and he'll be short of the first down. Now, don't forget, Iowa State has the wind at their back, and they've got a good kicker, Edwin Arceo, who's 10 of 41, and he has a long of 51, and he will come on out to try one from what looks to be 47 yards. So, so far, this will be our third field goal attempt, if this is not a fake, going with the wind at their back, and West Virginia is one of two with Tyler Bettencourt. So this will be about 48. Can he curve it in? How many games have you been to where you've seen the up? Each upright's been hit once now. And he, I think, fully expected to get a little help from the win. The win is coming out of that opposite corner and should have helped us a little bit, but that was straight dead center from the get-go. Pretty good snap, not wrong with any of that, and certainly had the distance, wasn't going to be a problem. He was trying to body English that one home, so Iowa State stays off the scoreboard, and West Virginia takes over at the 30-yard line with an empty backfield for Geno Smith. And in the shadows, he finds Stedman Bailey, who fell down and is very angry with himself. But it's going to be all the way out to the Iowa State 44, a gain of 27. A very nice throw, just getting into the, the zone out here. A decent job of the inside receiver taking the safety out of the top. And then look how Gino just throws the ball into the middle, settling the receiver down before the safety up top and the coverage underneath. They go to Alston, who's running up the gut, cuts back a little bit. He's not a big-time cutback runner, but he had so much room. Schaefer makes the stop. That's 15 yards, so 40 two yards in two plays and they're all the way down to the Cyclones 28 yard line and the lead blocker getting up front as well and Olsen is getting a lot of good quality yards between the tackles and that's something that this offense has really lacked but he's doing a very good job four touches four carries for 45 yards an element that this offense could use Gino Smith play action going to the end zone the wind got that pass or not, but West Virginia does have a first down, a 23-yard gain to about the four-yard line. Another grab for Stedman Bailey. Stedman Bailey is their touchdown maker. 20 touchdowns on the year, and once again, the, the wobble of the ball, and that ball was going down when it got to Bailey. That was a very good job by the receiver. You can see the wobble on it into the wind. That's an issue, and you can see it right there. Very good hand-eye coordination by Bailey on that play. One of the best red zone defenses in the country for Iowa State. And can they handle Alston? He gets to the one-yard line. Jeremy Reeves, number five. You see him getting up after dealing with that load. Reeves only weighs 176. Alston is 240. And you got getting him onto the line of scrimmage and going hurry up right here. Straight ahead, Alston, and he sneaks in. That should be a touchdown, and it is. We'll see if Alston gets over, but he's kind of the jackhammer inside, and absolutely, he he closes out that drive, but that's an element you can see this offense has been missing. Dana Holgerson told us, Geno Smith has taken the blame for our lack of productivity in our five-game losing streak, but it was without a run game. They found it last week with Kevon Austin, and now the, the battering ram Olsen comes back and is making an impact here early in this game. Five plays, 70 yards in one minute and 34 seconds. Alston six carries, 50 yards. So they now have a power runner in Alston, a speed runner in Austin and West Virginia has the lead in Iowa State. ESPN's college football on ABC brought to you by AT&T. Rethink possible.
and Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy. How do we get on the air? Those folks get us on the air. Kelly and I have the easiest jobs of anybody in this hardworking crew. We're so grateful to have them with us. That's everybody and, and more who work on the telecast, from folks who drive our trucks to set up our cables and plug in everything and work so hard and are so good at their jobs. And we are very thankful to have the men and women of this crew worth it with us. And we thank them so, so much for what they do for us. They make it very easy. Yeah, I say yes and amen to everything Dave just said. And it's be on the road anyway, but be on the road there, during this time, there's certainly a sacrifice. And, and we certainly appreciate that from our crew. He is Kelly. I am Dave. And we are delighted you've made us part of your Thanksgiving holiday weekend. It's such a wonderful time of the year for college football. What a great day this will be. And tomorrow, kicking into the wind, opportunity here for Jarvis West. Nice cut back there, West of the 30. Oh, almost got a great move, and the kicker, Bittenkirk, making the stop as we visit with John Saunders. John? Well, Dave, thanks a lot. It's Sports Center right now, brought to you by HP. Moorhead State has suspended their head basketball coach, Sean Woods, for the incident on Wednesday where he shoved guard Devin Atkinson. Athletic director Brian Hutchinson said it was unacceptable. Woods out one game. Dave? All right, thank you, John. Appreciate that. First down and 10, and happy Thanksgiving to you and everybody in our studios, too, by the way. James White, the tailback. And instead, they're going to run Jet Sweep. And that's Aaron Horn, number three, and he is hurled down by Carl Joseph. Outstanding freshman from Orlando who has played probably as well as anybody on that Mountaineer defense this year. It's going to be second down at six. Now straight ahead with James White. First down, he stumbled just a little bit. And if he hadn't, he might have gone even farther. And once again, Darwin Cook was able to make the stop. But this time, in the first down. And quarterback zone read is working very well. You can see a hat on a hat up front, getting everyone covered up. And a very good read by the young quarterback once again. Richardson now looking to his left, fires and incomplete. Second down and 10. He was trying to get it to the senior Josh Lenz, who made one catch earlier. I've not seen much yet with Richardson rolling to his right even though he's a right-handed quarterback. Yeah, and I think Richardson is very accurate, but I think it's inside the pocket. I haven't liked him out on the edge throwing in that sprint game very much. That's his first incompletion. He's three out of four in trouble, and he just flips it. That is a dangerous play. Now, is he ruled down? There's all sorts of rulings we need to find out. It, it could be a potential intentional grounding penalty as well. Yeah, we'll see if he's down, but this was not a very good decision regardless. I think that ball is out before the knee was down, and he was... I would, yeah, I thought yeah. that might be the ruling, but still the officials huddled before that. Now Richardson's missed his last two, and it's third down and ten. And regardless, outside the pocket, inside the pocket, wherever it was, that was not a very good decision. He did have Kurt Hammersmith, the tight end, in the general area, but hang on to the football. You can see that that pressure that their West Virginia is showing early on. They want to get pressure on this young quarterback. And here they come. Richardson hangs in, guns it, and he has the first down into West Virginia territory. The catch made by Jerome Tiller, and down to the 42-yard line after a 12-yard gain. And at the end of the day, the young quarterback goes to the right guy. The pressure guys are right here. They're going to get after the quarterback, but the outlet receiver, that's kind of the pressure regulator right there. And Iowa State playing some hurry up. They give it to James White for a gain of a couple. Second down and eight coming up. And Iowa State doesn't go hurry up typically anyway, but you would think they would even do less of it with this young quarterback in there. Richardson now he rolls right. He's got a huge gap and he'll tuck and go. Richardson to the 30 yard line. That's a first down and here come the flags. Shaq Petaway hit with a penalty. 
can see the very good decision. Man-to-man -man coverage leaves a lot of room, and then Petaway comes in and leads with his helmet, throws the flag. I think a very good call. Now a little bit more sun in the field. We'll see if that makes any difference here. And Richardson, he's got white as his tailback. Some pressure again. Richardson scrambling left. He's in a little bit of trouble, and he'll make something happen. Richardson picks up seven, almost eight yards. Got a around right somehow. I think we were kind of undersold a little bit on Richardson's feet. He obviously has very good feet, and I think once that adrenaline kicks in, he's made very good decisions. First choice on the half, West Virginia. I think Eight. West Virginia just wants to get them huddled up and see if they can get their guys on the right page. Eight carries, 48 yards for the redshirt freshman Sam Richardson, frustrating Dana Holgerson and his defense. The BCS countdown is on ESPN and ESPNU Sunday as the regular season winds down. Our analysts dissect the key wins, losses, and reveal the latest BCS standings. Who's up? Who's down? And we look ahead to the key matchups. BCS countdown Sunday at 8.30 on ESPN, the 9 o'clock on ESPNU, presented by Allstate. Off the timeout, called by the Mountaineers, second and three. Tight end, big bodied receiver right now. He has five touchdown catches on the year. Deep in the red zone, he's a tremendously big target. Looking in that direction, to the middle of the end zone, incomplete. Trying to fit it into Jerome Tiller. So here's third down and three. And that's the game they were working. Braun, the big tight end, was inside. He actually ended up breaking outside. And then Tiller comes in right behind him. And this was just poor ball placement. If that's another foot and a half inside, that's a catch. Here's the tenth play of the drive. Iowa State three out of five on third downs. route the fake inside and whoop over the top right there remember he just ran the slant the play before defensive back was looking for the slant he gets one step and slips his outside shoulder great route very good throw also by the young quarterback on that play and for tiller that is his first career receiving touchdown so he's got something to celebrate. The redshirt senior from San Antonio, Iowa State, breaks his scoring drought, and now West Virginia is challenged. I don't know. I just can't imagine that retiring someday is even an option for Sean and me. How'd you get comfortable enough to know you could really do it? Well, planning, of course. And we got a lot of good advice. A few years ago, your mom and I put some money into a Pacific Life fixed annuity that guarantees us an income for the rest of our lives, whether Social Security is all there or not. Hey, hey! Oh. <laughs> to learn more about a guaranteed lifetime income from Pacific Life, visit PacificLife.com. Extract. You'll also... There's your score in time. Iowa State on the board on the touchdown pass. To Jerome Tiller, so Sam Richardson now has five touchdown passes in a game and a half, or maybe almost a full game, and no interceptions on a 10-play, 69-yard drive in two minutes and 37 seconds. This isn't our Aflac trivia question, but you realize that Jerome Tiller was the starting quarterback when Iowa State beat Nebraska in 2009? No, I did not realize that. Well, yeah, no. Where do, you, where do you get that stuff? I hear voices in my head. That should have been our Aflac question. That sounds like a great I've, one. No, I dug up a good Aflac. I'm proud of this one. Here's Tavon Austin. Watch out. Iowa State paying. Look at this guy just inventing things. He's got a corner now here. Now it's trouble. Can he get a block? No. Great job. That is excellent kick coverage that time. Let's go to the studio and John Saunders. John. 
Well, guys, it's time for our Taco Bell update. LSU against Arkansas. I want to see perhaps the catch of the year. Zach Bettenberger, Jarvis Landry. This ball is behind him, and he still goes up with one hand, pulls it back in, and then watch the tuck. Make sure he has control. Touchdown LSU and a 10-0 lead. That is crazy. <laughs> On the ground, that was pretty amazing. Alston, what a force he has been for West Virginia. They are trying to rope him down, and he gets into Iowa State territory, a 21-yard pickup. Dana Hogerson wanted a run game. This is a run game. Kind of one cut and downhill, and a guy that will get yards after contact. This is exactly what this West Virginia offense has lacked. Run the football, throw it when you want to with your tremendous weapons. Set Bailey in motion. They go back to the big fella. Alston showing some good footwork to the 45-yard line. A gain of four. Second down and six coming up. Schaefer and Lang in on the stop for the Cyclones. And Alston will check out. But that may mean Austin coming into the backfield. Yeah, now you have the true change of pace. Alston is a guy that will absolutely batter you. And then you go in with amazing speed in the backfield. They give it instead to Andrew Bowie. And Bowie breaks one tackle, gets a first down, drop down by Schaefer, but it's at the 32-yard line, a 13-yard pickup. And I guarantee you, our friends in Morgantown and all the West Virginia fans are going, man, yeah, where, where did he, this come from? Why haven't we run the ball like this all year? And Bowie is that guy, when he has the right attitude when he runs, he's a kind of a an angry runner when he's at his best. But having Tavon Austin just show himself back there is worth the price of admission. Bowie again, and that's an excellent point. He is brought down after a two-yard gain. You see 47 A.J. Klein in there for Iowa State. Terrific, terrific football player. But you're right. Austin is so scary. You have to find him, and you have to account for him. Yeah, he doesn't have to get the ball, but you can see right there. They have 139 today. They've only averaged 165. A totally new dimension for this offense. And you know what? They're going into the wind. It makes it a little bit easier for Geno Smith. And now he throws a shorter pass to J.D. Woods. He is hit at around the 20-yard line by Jacquez Washington. But that's a first down for West Virginia. And Woods is that guy that can step up as really the third option. You have one football tip. Typically, you had two guys to distribute the football to. Woods can really be that third guy that Dana Holgerson is looking for. Geno Smith has hit eight of his last ten passes for 95 yards. Here's Tavon Austin. Flag down. Austin two. Only a two-yard gain. Let's see what the penalty is all about. Offside. Defense, number 98, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. That'll be first down and five, as Henry Simon was caught. And Dave, what that running game does, and then that screen passing game to Woods away from Bailey, it's creating a one-on-one -on -one situation outside with Bailey. And that's asking for trouble if you're Iowa State. Often a late add into the West Virginia huddle. And he brings the play, and he'll stand behind Geno Smith, but where is Tavon Austin? In motion. And there's Alston, and he is just unstoppable at the moment. Another first down, a gain of six. As you can see the effect of having Austin moving around on the line of scrimmage or in the backfield, because off defenses have to adjust to that. They have to. And then you get the downhill runner in Alston. First down and goal. And here's Austin trying to get to the edge. They're waiting for him. And he still is so, even if you think you've got him contained, he's everywhere. Yeah, the touch pass once again by Geno Smith, but he likes this. He almost comes to a complete stop. Burner and can get to that high end speed that most human beings can. That's where he has a tremendous advantage. Iowa State barely got a 12th man off the field in time. They made a late substitution up front. That's our Trayvon uh, Austin tracker. 
Out of the end zone, touchdown Bailey. Stedman Bailey. Touchdown number 21 on the season for West Virginia. And Nalen is outside and just clears out the quick out route. The accurate and quick throw, and then he appears to get that across the end zone. There's no doubt about that. Good hands, good body control, and gets that ball across the end zone. Kicking the pylon never hurts either. Good luck defending that offense when they have all of those weapons working together. West Virginia needs to win this game today or beat Kansas next week if they can't win today to become bowl eligible. They are part of the way there with an impressive, balanced offensive attack. You don't have to run to make that flag blow in the breeze today. And West Virginia celebrating, building up their lead back to 10 points, 17 to 7 with another Stedman Bailey touchdown. I say another, it's his first today, but 21st on the year. That flag bearer may end up in Iowa City with this wind if he keeps <laughs> holding on to that thing. There you see the wind gust, and it is blowing into the face of Tyler Bittenkert, the kicker. So he just said, I'm going to kick a ground ball. Taken up by Braun, the tight end, and Tonkery and Kiewitowski just belt him at the line. Now I dug up this Aflac myself for whatever that's worth. Our Aflac? Ah, Aflac! Ah. Trivia question. What former West Virginia linebacker was the first NFL player on the cover of Time magazine? I heard you give it away earlier. Yes, I did. Um, so some of the suspense is gone, but let the folks at home mull that over. Now I guarantee you, the West Virginia fans already have it. Chantrell Johnson's the tailback, number 21 for Iowa State. They scored on their last drive on Sam Richardson's touchdown pass to Jerome Tiller. And Richardson on the zone read gets about five to the 40-yard line, second and down, and five coming up. Isaiah Bruce on the stop. What do you think of Richardson so far? I really like his decision making, and he has better feet than we were we were told that he had. So I, I like it so far, and mainly at this stage of his career, he has to make really, really good decisions. So far, so good. This time he hands off to Chantrell Johnson. Johnson trying to make a miss. You see George Wright on the back end of that play, but he had some help. Isaiah Bruce, the last guy to get off the pile there, 31. And Josh Francis also destroyed the play. And defensive coordinator Joe DeForest from West Virginia. That's what he wants is just create something negative somewhere along the way that forces a, a third and not so manageable situation that we see right there. And that's where Richardson has to prove that he can make plays in the air. That not manageable is nine. Now West Virginia backs a safety. Well back. And almost intercepted. You see all the white shirts. Terrell Chestnut, a freshman from Pottstown, Pennsylvania, had his hands on that and it was fourth down at nine. And Bundridge was, you can see the rolled up corner trying to get into that, that fade void and then the safety cook coming off the hash. And Richardson was staring down the receiver the entire time. And what that does is it gives the, the, the safety coming off the hash free reign to just immediately break on that football. That was trouble waiting to happen. Kirby Vanderkamp now with the wind at his back. High kick. But not a great one. That thing hooked left. And West Virginia will get some decent field position out of this. All right, let's get the answer to our trivia question. What former West Virginia linebacker was the first NFL player on the cover of Time Magazine? The great Hall of Famer, former New York Giant, former Washington Redskin, and Redskins broadcaster, Sam Huff. Heck of a player. 22-yard punt. I wonder if that Affleck duck realizes that a lot of my family has that on the Thanksgiving table. Oh, around your place, yeah, I believe that. On the ground, here's Austin. There you see some of the dynamic moves he can make in a short period. And that's about a 10-yard game. We'll see if they gets the first down. There is the photo. And also, even before there was an NFL film, I think it was CBS that did a, a, a special called The Violent World of Sam Muff, where they wired it. And I don't think you can find it anymore. But it's, it, I've, seen, I've seen some clips from it. It's fascinating. Second down and a yard to go. Geno Smith, plenty of time. 
flag is down. You see that it might be a hold. Here's Bailey. Ooh, he took a shot from Dion Broomfield, number 26. But let's see what this flag is. Holding offense, number 62. 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. And 62 is Curtis Fight, and he's the one who's coming off the field. And they played a lot of tackles this year. They've actually been rotating tackles, about three of them. But you can see right there, Fight gets beat early and then gets hurt, but ends up grabbing a hold and gets called for the, the holding penalty on that play. And West Virginia is going to have to overcome that penalty if they're going to get points here. But you can see right there, 62 is out of the game, and they played a lot of right tackles this year. So Nick Kindler, 79, will be the guy. Second down and 11. Under two minutes in our half. Draw play on the delay to Bowie. Maybe a yard, and that's going to be all. A.J. Klein in there, 47. And he was joined by Henry Simon, 98. So here's third down and 10. And third and long situations is typically where Bailey shows up. He's the vertical receiver. Second charge, timeout. Iowa State, and 30 Iowa. seconds of lane. That's a smart idea because they're hoping to, their defense will stiffen and get the ball back. Well, I mentioned earlier today what Saturday is going to be like in college football, and you can see it all and never get off the couch. Trifecta of impact games at noon. One of the greatest ever. Michigan and Ohio State from the horseshoe. Ohio State trying to go undefeated. From Tallahassee, Florida and Florida State. The Gators think they have a chance in the BCS if a lot of things happen, including Notre Dame losing the USC at 8 o'clock on ABC. All of those games on ABC, but USC will not have Matt Barkley. That is a showdown Saturday. Here's the All-State BCS Top 10. And State Idol, but that's it. Everybody else is in action. Be interesting if that gets shaken up like it did last week. Chaos will ensue. Speaking of chaos, here's an individual band of chaos and Tavon Austin, and he gets it out to the 44-yard line. Gage Schaefer, who's playing for Darrell Givens at strong safety. Givens we haven't seen on the field at all. That's a major loss for Final Iowa charge State. Timeout. Iowa State, 30 seconds. And they're uh, out of timeouts. Darrell Givens leads the NCAA. Please reset the game clock to 140. Leads the NCAA in takeaways. Six fumble recoveries and three interceptions and not able to play today, we're learning, for Coach Paul Rhodes. Well, that third and long situation, I was actually disagreeing with Iowa State using the timeout because, remember, this is Geno Smith and company. They know how to throw the football, and what did they do after the timeout? They come out and run it. I, I question that. I, I'm just not sure. The wind is certainly a factor, but I don't think it's that your quarterback a chance to make a play in that situation. Well, Benton Curtis punting into the wind. I have a thought on that. We'll get the punt out first. I'm going to argue that that wasn't such a bad idea. Benton Curtis, that's a tough kick to make. And watch out here, Iowa State, because that takes a funky bounce. And West Virginia covers it at the 28-yard line, a 27-yard punt. The only thing I would argue in favor of West Virginia is they gave the ball to Austin. I, I know that they expect that from him, but that's asking, I think, a little bit too much. They were certainly, I think, by the play choice, trying to catch the defense off guard. But remember, the defense is thinking big play as well when they see number one in the backfield. So they're defending that accordingly. But I think that was kind of a, a playing awfully conservative for Dana Holgerson on that last drive. 92 seconds for Iowa State. They don't have a timeout. They threaten blitz, and instead they back out of it and stunt on a slant pattern. Going to be right around the first down marker. Don't forget, in college, the clock stops for first down. Josh Lenz making the grab. They do get the first down. But the clock starts immediately when the ball is marked ready for play. Richardson, that pass tipped. Second down and 10 coming up. Stops the clock with a minute and 16. Looked like Isaiah Bruce got a hand on that. Don't forget the Capital One Halftime Report coming up next from our studio. John Saunders and Jesse Palmer will take you through the highlights of the Nebraska-Iowa game. Uh, state of Iowa, the focus of college football exactly. today. The Just state of Iowa. A couple hours to the east down I-80. And a lot more, plus a lot looking ahead, too.
On second and ten, that pass into a lot of traffic, incomplete for Aaron Horn. So now third down and ten, and West Virginia doesn't need to use the timeout here, but all of a sudden, if you're Paul Rhodes, what's your approach? Yeah, I think you're conservative in this situation because actually Richardson threw into coverage that last time. West Virginia coverage, and he tried to thread the needle into Horn, and you do not want to go in after a poor performance on this drive if you're if you're Iowa State you're in this game you don't want to make a bad mistake right here and of course they will have the win at their back if they need to punt but Vanderkamp did not hit the last one well Richardson that solves that problem that's a first down for Iowa State Cook in there on the stop the catch made by Jarvis West that's his 28th catch on the year it's an 18-yard pickup and a first down Looking left, firing in that direction. A diving grab is made for a short gain by West of four yards. Make it five. We'll call it second down and five. West is trying to get onside. Out of the middle of the field, and that could be an interference penalty. And it is not. And that's not a popular call here in Ames. Pat Miller breaking on the slant route and watch the the right hand was actually tugging on the receiver as he breaks on that ball. Chris Young running running a slant route and Pat Miller arrived maybe just a hair early but hey no harm no foul. Five out of eight on third down the Cyclones here's third and five. Richardson got belted and overthrew that one. He got hit. Hardest hit he's taken today. So now you've got to try a, either a bomb field goal of 56 yards or go for it or try to go ahead and ask Vanderkamp to tuck one inside maybe the 10 yard line, your punter. Well, it certainly appears that Iowa State is going to go for it right here, but you're right. If you have a punter that's such a good weapon, you're out of timeouts 34 seconds. And the other team has two timeouts, and the clock isn't starting because it was an incomplete pass. And Geno Smith at quarterback. Richardson can't lose yardage, but he does get the first down. Richardson inside the 20 yard. Six seconds remain. Well, Dave, you saw all of the pressure that West Virginia was bringing, and what that translates into is man to man on the back end. Quarterback breaks with contain, a lot of room to run. Toward the end zone, open. It's the pass underthrown. Is it good? It's a touchdown. Josh Lenz. and he did, but did Lenz get it off the ground? And it certainly looked like it on that particular look at it. I would agree with the initial call on the field. Of course, the booth will make double sure this is a touchdown. And here comes the whistle, understandably. Unless this is being challenged, yes, West Virginia is going to take one of their timeouts. Second short timeout, West Virginia, 30 seconds. But notice he did not announce they're challenging the play. And remember, every play is being looked at by the replay boot. And so the challenge is almost obsolete these days. You'll see if he gets his hands under it. Underthrown, Lenz beats the corner underneath. And it looks like it right there. He rolls over with possession. I think what we're going to hear is the play is confirmed on the field. I think the officials got it exactly right. Well, remember, we still have not heard the referee even say the play is under further review. You're exactly right, and they called a timeout, but now, didn't necessarily challenge it. You know, and I think that might have been the mentality for Dana Holgerson. I can't get inside his head. I might be completely wrong, but why else would you take a timeout before a PAT? See, and that's what the replay play. booth will tell you is you don't need to burn a timeout to give us extra time. We're looking at it anyway. We will buzz the field if we need to stop play. Richardson on that drive. Delay game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Three attempt to try. Well, that's just weird. 
Five out of eight for Richardson on that drive, 50 yards passing, and they had that big 21-yard run. Just think about that, Kelly. We went from fourth and ten, thinking, man, they're in trouble, Iowa State, to their lining up for a little bit longer PAT. Yeah, and you're right. And once again, the running ability by the quarterback that really was understated, but his legs have worked well for him as Richardson's in this first half. A little bit of a rocky snap, but no problem for our sale. And Iowa State gets a jolt before halftime as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. That's a good look at Jack Trice Stadium. And you get folks spread out on the berms on the sides. And Tavon Alston, 81 yards and a touchdown. Bailey, 66 yards, his 21st touchdown catch. And Richardson in his first start. And yeah, Kelly, you're right. He has been a surprising weapon with his feet. And the majority of those have been chain movers. Really good decisions on second and unmanageable and third and long situations as well. He's used his legs to convert. And that has been the difference, I think, here in this first half. And that's actually Sean Austin, not Tavon Austin, at the top with the 81 yards and the touchdown. And Sean Austin has been a major force on the ground for West Virginia. Really, you could say that's probably the first time for him to be this good since September. Yeah, he's, he hasn't been healthy really since the year started. And Dana Holgerson talked to us about that. They've lacked that thump ability in the run game and it's really hurt this offense you know they're dynamic and throwing the football that's why Tavon Austin went into the backfield a week ago so with the wind at the back is Austin going to get a chance to return it no he is not so West Virginia will get the ball with a timeout at their own 25 yard line we'll show down Saturday on ESPN features three heated in-state rivalries at noon the Bulldogs trying to earn a spot in the SPN keep national title hopes alive against the Ramblin' Wreck from Georgia Tech. That'll be in Athens. Then at 3.30, Bedlam. The Sooners' quest for the Big 12 title continues. They host Red Hot Oklahoma State. And then at 7 Eastern, South Carolina and Clemson face off in that Palmetto State rivalry under the lights of Clemson. How loud is that going to be? That starts at noon on ESPN. Oh, brother, that is going to be noisy. The call on the ground, but it is Austin. Flag down behind the play. He'll gain six, but will it come back? Austin. Holding offense number 67. 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. That's the sixth penalty for 58 yards against the Mountaineers. The Spain 67 right there gets beat quickly inside and then just chooses to grab him. Nelson, 31, made a really good inside move. And then if you're 300 plus pounds and you hold your hands in the air and say, I didn't do it, typically you did do it. And the officials obviously knew it beforehand. Well, they'll give it to Austin again because he can break virtually anything. He gets a nice gain of nine, but Austin. Iowa State's done a better job of defending him than Oklahoma did. West Virginia, however, will take the lead in the halftime, 17 to 14, as we get you set to the studio. John Saunders for the Capital One Halftime Report. Thanks. This is ESPN College Football, presented by Kay Jewelers. This is ESPN College Football presented by Kay Jewelers and it's West Virginia over Iowa State 17 to 14 and interestingly this game has been decided as much by the ground games of both these teams both the expected and unexpected. Yeah West Virginia has more rush attempts than they do pass attempts in the first half and then Richardson the red shirt freshman quarterback getting it done on second and third and long with his legs. We didn't hear anything about his legs. And they've worked very, very well so far. Meantime, West Virginia has run the ball well with Shane Alston and Tavon Austin. And it is going to be West Virginia football on a cold day in Ames where it feels like about 17 degrees with that wind going from left to right. And this is Stedman Bailey on the kickoff return out to the 31-yard line. 
Dave Lamont, Kelly Stoffer, and our ESPN crew here. Very, very happy to be with you in Ames, Iowa, and around the country as we show you our Pacific Life game summary. And Gino really hasn't gotten off in the pass game yet. He's made pretty good decisions, been frustrated a little bit, a couple of throws down the field, but it's been very controlled. But at the end of the day, he's getting it done with his running backs. And then Sam Richardson, the 73 yards rushing, typically were drive extenders. And then he found ways to finish drives as well. So on the ground goes West Virginia, and here is Austin. He just takes it out of bounds rather than take the hit from Jock West Washington. That's a good game, though, on first down. It'll be a pickup of about six, second and four coming up. And the diversity in West Virginia's run game in the first half was, I think, the issue for Iowa State. They have the speed of Austin, and then Alston comes in and just is a battering ram between the tackles. Austin splits out there. He is in the, the second of those three receivers to the left. And Geno Smith with a quick out. That's going to be a first down for West Virginia. Catch made by J.D. Woods. He had a very productive first half for the Mountaineers. Yeah, that's his fifth catch. And Stedman Bailey had four catches, only four catches in the first half. But remember that with Austin in the backfield a lot, they, Iowa State can roll coverage to Bailey, so Woods should have some opportunity. Geno Smith is in his last seven passes. You see our weather conditions right here. That's a steady wind, too, today, and it gusts higher. And in traffic, and Smith, that was a laser shot. And a catch made there by Bailey. Tackle made by Kenneth Lynn. And again, the Iowa State secondary functioning without a key player. Strong safety, Darrell Gibbons, not playing today. Yeah, Sage Schaefer had a big half, had 11 tackles in the first half, filling in for Gibbons, being an extra run defender in the box against that newly found West Virginia run game. Second down in a couple. You see West Virginia 10 and 1 under Dana Holgerson taking the lead in the dressing room, and there is one of the few ineffective runs for Sean Alston as A.J. Klein, 47, in there on the stop. Well, Dave, you and I were just talking about it. A.J. Klein needs to show up in the second half against this West Virginia's newfound desire to run the football, especially between the tackles. A.J. Klein needs to get off here in the second half. Mountaineers, two out of five on third down. for Iowa State right there with Austin in the slot. There he goes. And they send him out and send Austin up the middle for the West Virginia first down. But what? he draws your eyes. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to say the same thing. Austin draws your eyes away, and it's just a simple dive play from there. Yeah, that's one of the guys that Iowa State has to account for, and you're right. In the end, it's a simple dive play, but the defense is wondering why number one Austin is going in motion. And Geno Smith out in the open gets it completed to Connor Arlea. And there you see Jack West Washington, number 10, kept that play from doing anything. As a matter of fact, they're going to lose a couple of yards, second down and a dozen. Yeah, great reaction out of the secondary by Washington on that screen play. And Harley is not exactly the guy that you're going to build touches for, but they wanted to change it up. But great reaction by Washington right there. There's the veteran defensive coordinator, Wally Burnham, for the Cyclones. Old school. throw by Smith. Great coverage that time by Kenneth Lynn. You just now see that Stedman Bailey caught the pass. Lynn got there so quickly you couldn't even see who it was. That far, that's Jim Jeremy Reeves, number five, not six. Kenneth Lynn on the coverage. It's going to be gain of seven, third down and about five on the opening drive of this third quarter. Bailey on the out route is that true number one prototypical receiver that can get things done vertically. They need to find number three more in this second half. Six catches, 76 yards for Bailey and a touchdown. Underneath they go. This is Arlea, and he'll have the first down. He got hit, but he got the first down. And there's A.J. Klein again, and also Schaefer with another tackle, number 16. You can see Arlea coming underneath right there, and very good recognition by Geno Smith early in the progression. That was a good outlet receiver against a soft zone coverage by Iowa State. 
11 in a row for Gino. Now he'll hand off to Austin on the short side of the field. He is not yet very much. But it'll be second and long coming up. They didn't give him a lot of room to work with in the first place. And there's Klein again. Absolutely. I think Klein got the message at halftime that he needs to be more active. This isn't a West Virginia team that wants to throw the football all over the parking lot. They had a run mentality in the first half. And A.J. Klein needs to be that counter for Iowa State's defense. He'll try to keep the short side of the field. A lot of collisions there around the 29-yard line. He stays in bounds. Clock will keep rolling in the third quarter. Gain of five. And you can see Alston's main skill set is he's a he's a pile mover. And that's something that this offense has lacked. The guy that can run with a little bit of an attitude, even when it isn't locked impeccably well on the line of scrimmage, make guys miss but get yards after contact 11th play of the drive against Wally Burnham's defense Austin out of the backfield there he goes one-on-one -on -one with Klein made a miss and he squirts loose for the first down and I don't know whether Klein is hurt or frustrated yeah, it looks like he's just frustrated with himself as he gets up quickly but you said it exactly right. You can see Austin coming out of the backfield. Gino sees the one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. There isn't really many linebackers in the entire country that want to be one-on-one -on -one with Austin out of the backfield. First down, West Virginia. They're not going to like playing Austin on Sundays either. Gino Smith looked deep down the field, flagged down behind the play. The pass caught. At the 17 yard line by J.D. Woods, but. Yeah, I think Jeff Braun, the right guard. Number 57, 10 yard penalty for two first down. And Braun really didn't need to do it, but you can see him right here at the end of the play. Gino was going to get this ball off. He understood the pressure. And right there, the up and under, and Gino is moving away from that pressure anyway, but it's instinctive for a guard to protect the quarterback, and I don't blame him one bit. Well, if you're a quarterback, that's right. I love those guys up front. First down and 20. And there's that little tap to Stedman Bailey, and that's going to get inside the 30 down to the 28, maybe the 27-yard line. Still going to be a little bit of work here. They've got to get down to the Iowa State 13 for a first down, for second and long. And a lot of offensive football is whether you can overcome a potential drive-killing play somewhere along the way. And we've already seen the holding penalty has been presented to West Virginia. Can they overcome it right here? West Virginia with that brisk wind at their backs. Should be a favorable matchup down here. And they're going to run in that direction. And over to the 25 20. And there is Klein again, number 47, right in the face of Austin. Almost a penalty. A little bit of yapping going on now with Jeremiah George, number 52 for Iowa State. Wonder if Klein can actually watch tape. You can see the look in his eyes. Much different attitude out of their leader on the defensive side in this second half. He's going to play at a different level here in the second half. This is his last game in Ames, a senior from Kimberly, Wisconsin. Here he comes on third and a dozen on the blitz. Geno Smith in trouble. He got away and he's sacked. Brought down by Cleon Lang. And Geno Smith, look on his face like, where did all of those people come from? It's fourth down and 13. And he's bitten Kurtz. Iowa State bringing all kinds of chaos, and that's what Wally Burham likes to do. When an offense is driving the football, Iowa State will try to bring pressure to create that negative play. They've been successful so far in the second half. First sack of the game for either team. Bittenkirk, one for two. We almost had a third kick hit an upright. That one just tucked in. West Virginia now leads 20 to 14. Geno Smith sees the pressure, and it's just too much cardinal and gold. But West Virginia got the field goal. At one time, Geno Smith was at the top of the Heisman list when West Virginia was 5-0. 
And they run into some trouble when they hit the Big 12 skid. His numbers are not terrible, Kelly, but he's no longer on the Heisman list. You can see that percentage down, touchdowns down, and that's came. And he started kind of pressing, get frustrated. He wasn't getting plays down the field. He was being defended differently as well. People were dropping into coverage, but I think he's beginning to figure it out. He's being more patient. He's making much better decisions here in the last couple of games. Made his last 12 passes. A lot of folks around the NFL still have him at the top of their quarterback draft lists. Here is Jarvis West, 35, out to the 37-yard line. Great field position for the Cyclones. Let's check in with John Saunders in our studio. John. All right, thanks a lot. Time for the Sports Center right now, brought to you by HP. The NHL calling off games through December 14th now, plus the All Star game in the 69th day of their lockout. Negotiating sessions earlier this week proved ridiculous. And, and John, I know that hurts. But I guess they can take down the banner in the Columbus, Ohio airport now, welcoming you to All Star weekend in the NHL. That's uh, not going to happen. Iowa State's first play of this half on offense, and they run a kind of a jet sweep look for a decent gain with Albert Gary, redshirt junior from Ocala, not far from the University of Florida. That's a four-yard pickup, second and six. And that's what Iowa State will do. They will bring the receiver in motion and Gary that particular time, but they run outside zone quarterback read. They try to get it to the edge to thin out that defense. Freshman Richardson, he's taking off again. He's got a little bit of room, made a man miss, and gets into West Virginia territory at the 47 yard line before the tackle made by Shaq Petaway. That's a gain of 11. And Richardson is the leading rusher today for Iowa State with 84 yards. Yeah, the most productive part of Iowa State's offense has been this young man's decision making. And a lot of times, as a young quarterback, translates into use your feet well. Yeah, he uses his arm well, wide receiver wide open near the marker. And I'm not sure he got the first down. You see where the official is there. Quentin Bundridge, number nine, with a catch. Just not on the stop. It's a gain of nine. Second and short is next. And the offensive coordinator, Courtney Messingham, we'll see if he makes it right here. Then he goes back. He had it at one time and went back. And do they give him forward progress? They don't. And on second and short, that pass bounces in. So a surprise throw. And again, Bundridge, uh, one thing with the win, now we, Iowa State's going into the win. We're just not seeing deep. You're right. It's more manageable stuff, and I think that's pretty wise. Unless you have a big play opportunity down the field, it's been more management stuff. Straight ahead, and that's going to be a first down. You saw Josh Francis sell out, but Shaq Petaway able to number 36 that was actually Carl Joseph number eight those eight and fours getting condensed they look somewhat similar it was Joseph who came in from the safety position and almost blew that play up it's a first down for the Cyclones longest pass for Iowa State today 18 yards Chantel Johnson, number 21, gets a couple, maybe uh, only one. Terrence Garvin in there, along with Shaq Rowell. At stake for West Virginia today, bowl eligibility. You saw that 5-5 five and five record. They do have one more game to play in Morgantown next week against the bottom team of the Big 12, Kansas. But still, you want some momentum going yeah, into home. You, you want to end, could. obviously, the losing streak. Iowa State already bowl eligible. Yeah, you would think they would win that last game, but... They've been saying it for six weeks. Here's your deep pass down the field in the end zone. It's a caught touchdown by Quentin Bundridge. <laughs> Iowa State has been running it really well, and then it's just a go route right over the top and top of Bundridge gets on top of Chestnut number 16. West Virginia has had incredible problems outside covering vertical routes and that's a perfect example of it right there that's the longest touchdown pass of Richardson's career 35 yards he has six touchdown passes now going back to when he took over early in the Kansas game last week.
and into the wind. What a gorgeous throw this is by the redshirt freshman from Winter Park, Iowa State on top for the first time today. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Chevrolet. From kickoff to the last yard, Chevy runs deep. Travelers, insurance for auto, home, and business. And Garmin, this holiday season, give a Garmin, the most trusted name in GPS navigation. And the faithful here at Jack Trice Stadium celebrating for the first time their Cyclones are in front in this game on a beautiful delivery by Richardson, who's now 11 of 20, 149 yards. He has seven career touchdown passes and no interceptions. Not bad. And he took over only a week ago. Not bad at all. So into the breeze. Look at that kick just hang there. And that's Makes one miss, makes two miss. Looking for a block, now he'll take the middle. And he's had enough. <laughs> Let's see. Tavon Austin needs a break. We'll take it with him. Welcome back, everybody, as Iowa State is on top of West Virginia. Just take a look at how it happened. West Virginia wants to protect their corners with the safety. The play action forces one-on-one -on -one outside. The safety gets out of position. And Richardson throws a dart perfectly downfield, finds Brundridge. West Virginia wants to protect their guys outside. That's a great way to isolate them on play action pass, try to get that safety down in the box. Now let's see how West Virginia reacts. This is a different formation than what we've seen. Geno Smith looking deep down the field. He goes down the field, long throw, knocked away at midfield. There you see Jeremy Reeves getting a hand in front of Stedman Bailey, second down and 10. And that breaks 12 straight completions for Smith. And Jeremy Reeves does a great job. It's Bailey is running the deep over route and then the, the catch up speed right at the very end. Perfectly played by Jeremy Reeves. Now again, this time West Virginia has the win and is at their backs as opposed to what you saw Richardson throw into the wind for the touchdown. Back to the ground. And not a lot there. That's Austin on the carry. Willie Scott. The redshirt junior from Orlando in there to make the stop. Third down and about eight coming up. And how about how Iowa State is defending Tavon Austin as a running back? And Oklahoma couldn't do it, obviously, last week. Well, they didn't know. To be fair to them, they didn't know it was coming. But that, and that's what I was going to say. The preparation that Iowa State has had to think about it certainly has made a difference here this afternoon. Smith firing incomplete. Trying to fit it into J.D. Woods. Cliff Stokes, a junior college transfer, was in coverage. And it's fourth down and eight. Here comes Tyler Bittenkirk and the Mountaineer punt team. The luxury that Iowa State has when Tavon Austin isn't the second quick receiver out there, you can see the break on the ball by Stokes. Very well done. But they're rotating coverage as Iowa State to put a top over Bailey and keep a safety over the top of him. But they're playing very good defense the rest of the way, like you saw Stokes do right there. Aaron Horn is by himself around the 26-yard line. Bittenkurt, here comes a big rush. And it's an end-over-end -end wobbler. Gives Horn a chance, 35. Ooh, man, he takes a hit. Ooh, 37-yard line, five-yard return, 37-yard punt. The West Virginia Mountaineers say they have the ball, but the officials say it belongs to the Cyclones. Horn really got drilled. Glad to see that he's up. He's a little, and I don't blame him for being a little bit wobbly because he really got melted. Yeah, right at the very end, his horn's going down right there. Well, that's dead on helmet to helmet. Wow, that was brutal. No flag. That's undoubtedly what may have led to Horn leaving the ball on the ground for a second. The 36-yard line, good field position for Iowa State. West Virginia just now getting their defense out there. And remember, West Virginia has been defensively challenged this year. And you can see right now, Iowa State has some confidence. They've found some things they like offensively. On the ground, here's James White. White breaking a tackle. He's dragged down finally by Terrence Garvin. 
Looks like he's going to be a yard shy, gain a nine, second down and one. And Iowa State right now is saying this. If you're going to keep your safeties deep to cover your corners, it's a favorable run look for us. We're going to run the football. And they're going to try again with White. This time he is swallowed up. Very close, but if you go by that official coming to the, your screen right now, they did not make it. It's going to be third down and short. And really short. That was a bad spot, and spots obviously can be reviewed as well. Nothing coming from anywhere, no whistles. They go to Woody. First down. The throwback fullback, Jeff Woody. Didn't even, he turned his back right away. He put both hands over the football, turned the back, and got the first down. Yeah, it's all about ball security and run downhill as fast as you can when Jeff Woody. Number 32 comes in there. He's really kind of the short yardage goal line blocker that they throw him a bone and let him cut carry at that time. And here's a reverse to Jarvis West. Well covered by West Virginia. He's made a ton of tackles from his safety position, number 25 for the Mountaineers. And then lost about a yard on that. It'll be second down and 11 coming up for the Cyclones. And Josh Francis did a really nice job. He was actually the edge defender where that reverse was coming to. He made it go back inside and then very well defended inside as well. Fast moving third quarter. We're down to two minutes in this period. West Virginia led at halftime 17-14. Richardson has hurt West Virginia with his feet, lobs one to midfield, and is knocked loose, incomplete, closing very quickly. Nick Piatowski, he saw that play coming. Richardson kind of hung that one up a little bit. And once again, the quick pressure inside. You can see West Virginia rushing for getting the quick pressure, and Josh Francis probably got held right there by Jacob Gannon that wasn't called, but the quick pressure inside forces Richardson to throw off his back foot. So James White shaking up on the play. He was the intended receiver. We love college basketball. Of course you do. The 14th annual ACC Big Ten Challenge kicks off Tuesday on ESPN with the doubleheader. This is awesome. Number 16 NC State versus number four Michigan. C.J. Leslie, Tim Hardaway Jr. Then at 9.30, UNC in Indiana square off for the first time. You're going to have that. James Michael McAdoo leading on the Tar Heels against Coach. Wednesday, the Spartans and the Hurricanes, and also you're going to get to the Buckeyes and the Blue Devils. Wow, that's such a great challenge. Richardson held in the pocket. Is there going to be a flag for interference? Nothing coming from the officials. The intended receiver was Chris Young, broken up by Pat Miller. Pat Miller does a great job of breaking on the ball. There's certainly contact. You can see the official looking directly at it. It wasn't egregious, and it didn't change the, the ability for the receiver to get through the football. I think that's great coverage by Pat Miller. Well, I can tell you haven't played quarterback in a while. I'm just thinking if yeah, that what, was you who threw that pass. What did I just say? I, I, I want that tape It's marked. always pass interference. I can't believe it. This I, is an NFL quarterback right here. I just defended completely defensively. completely gone off my rocker. Vanderkamp on a fake. Does he have the first down? He's right at the marker. The collision is there, and he appears to have the first down. Jordan Thompson hit him. The spot is a first down. And this is something that is typically set up by looks they've seen earlier. And right there, if you see the right look, Vanderkamp has the green light. But he didn't have the first down until he lowers his shoulder. And I never thought I would say that about a punter. But right there, he gets physical and actually converts. That's tremendous. He got hit. But the Cyclones keep it. What a play. And now they go to Woody to the 38-yard line again at three. It'll be second down and seven. Well, Dave, those are the type <laughs> of decisions you make when you're playing. You can see Vanderkamp right there is like, what did I just do? It's one thing running it. It's another thing lowering your shoulder and converting. That was awesome. 
So Richardson rolling and he'll just lower his shoulder and he's down to the 35 yard line a short game Jared Barber on the stop Iowa State trying to get a seventh for the second time There's a program that for a while just winning seven seemed almost impossible they had some close calls with Dan McCartney they got the situation where they almost won a division one year 2005 couldn't do it but Paul Rhodes has been successful here in Ames Richardson to dump it off to Woody. No, he goes deep down the field into traffic, incomplete. Broken up by Darwin Cook. That was a scary throw. Chris Young, the intended receiver, and it's fourth down. Now, fourth and four. I think you got it. Punting here seems to be superfluous. Yeah, I think you have to go for it right here. And I think if you're going to run a fake punt, you're certainly going to go for it. Even though it's fourth and the better part of four yards, I think. Going for it right here is the right decision by Paul Rhodes. And Richardson has proven himself to be dangerous in these situations because if he gets an edge, he's been able to get first downs. Yeah, West Virginia needs to contain the quarterback in the run game. They bring pressure. Richardson throws, passes, tip, and incomplete. The umpire said it's incomplete. It wouldn't really have mattered if the pass had been caught anyway by Kiatowski. It is turnover on downs for the West Virginia defense. That fake punt by Vanderkamp goes for not, but I think that's the type of decision making that goes into realizing that you have to pull out all stops when you're playing West Virginia. They're going to get more points before this game's out. That is the sixth Vanderkamp fake in his career, by the way. So now the fans here in Ames and it's not a pretty day outside it's pretty in the clouds but cold in here these folks have stayed bundled up cheering on their defense. This is Sean Alston and he, that's the way he has run all afternoon for West Virginia stops the clock with nine seconds to go after that first down and Alston is now over 100 yards 102 on the afternoon here in Iowa State and that will be the end of our quarter. We've got a wonderful Big 12 game here. West Virginia trying to end a five game losing streak and get to bowl eligibility. Iowa State's already got their six wins. This presentation of college football presented by Kate Jewelers will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN Live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Got to gotta stay warm any way you can here in Ames, Iowa. The wind chill makes us feel like we're at about 15 degrees right now, and the sun is gone, and so is opportunity as the Iowa State defense rises up to stuff Tavon Austin and A.J. Klein clearly listened to Kelly's halftime speech about playing better in this half and they needed a big half out of him you can see him running right through the hole and he's helped by very good play on the defensive front line but 47 A.J. Klein is a different player here in the second half yeah Roosevelt legit was also in there and then straight ahead they go to the power back with Austin and he gets it almost all now here comes just a basic play a gain of 14 here comes a gigantic third down and short and it, it's almost like Iowa State lets up the double team right there on the left coming up in great timing 74 Madison the center does a nice job of getting to that second level hold everything prior to the snap Iowa State called their first charge timeout interesting decision by Iowa State there you go, Jack Trice Stadium, time for our Pacific Life game summary. And some of the numbers of interest has been the first start for the redshirt freshman quarterback, Sam Richardson, very effective on the ground. The fake punt by Kirby Vanderkamp got a first down and a great job, I think, by Iowa State Absolutely. to bottle up Tavon Austin. I think that's the story of the game. You look at what Tavon Austin did against a really good Oklahoma defense a, a week ago, and Iowa State is tremendous tonight. Geno Smith on third and two. Dumps off. Incomplete, or is it a fumble recovery? No, the call is incomplete. Big hit. It's an incomplete pass. Fourth down. So fourth down and two. Do they go for it? No. They're going to punt into the wind. Simon with a big hit there. 
Connecticut because he's been on formation for the Mountaineers here in Horn, D12 Ohio State. Again, into that stiff breeze. A little bit of pressure. You can see the ball just get held up. Nice job with the fair catch at the 17-yard line. Let's head to the studio and John Saunders. It's the Dr. Pepper Conference update, and we'll move to the Pac-12, Washington and Washington State. A little apple cup. Bishop Sankey takes it and goes two yards for a touchdown untouched. Washington grabs the lead. All right, John, keep an eye on that. We've got a fun ball game here under cool conditions. And here comes Iowa State and their cool customer of a quarterback and Sam Richardson got the start today over Steel Jantz and has played well. You see what Iowa State has done leading after three on the ground. Chantrell Johnson, 25, takes a hit at the 26-yard line and a flag, and this might be on Iowa State on Bob Graham, number 78. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. He comes and tries to peel a defender off the pile at the very end. Very ill-advised if you're Iowa State right now. I would pick up the flag. I don't think it was the You don't think it was warranted? Second. No. But I, you know what? I, if I saw a replay, I might agree with, with this call. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 78. Have this instead of goal, second down. All right, now I, I saw him come in and make the hit. All right, the play is dead. I think it's not only that the play is dead, but the defender really had given up on the play and was a bystander at that time. I think rightly so officials are going out of the way to protect, in a sense, defenseless players. And I think it was well right there on that play that was just kind of standing by the pile. Okay, so you just call him a six foot four, 310 pound lineman defenseless. <laughs> in that particular moment. Second and 15. This is a designed run, and it's going nowhere. This is one of the things that we had talked about as Jared Barber ruined the play number 33, is that Richardson more as an ad lib, not as a design play. That one appeared to be designed. It's third down now and 15. And that design quarterback draw right there, he was very tentative. I think when it's an impromptu type of run on second and long or third and long, he's been dynamic, but that was not a dynamic run, nor was it well blocked. Pressure from the edge. Richardson wisely steps up, takes off. He'll get hit. He won't get the first down, but he'll make it a little bit easier for Kirby Vanderkamp. Doug Rigg in there on the stop for West Virginia's defense. And see, this is the downside of Richardson giving up on plays a little bit too early. You can see right there, he takes a pretty good pop at the end, but he actually had some things to work with down the field. But not only does he scramble early, but he does not keep his head down the field to see open receivers when he broke contain. Here's a risky proposition. Now you're going to be punting to Tavon Austin. You're a great kicker in Vanderkamp. And the left footer gets up a high sideways wobbler. Austin, what's he going to do from the 33? Austin. Austin 45. Austin 50. 45 40. Austin cuts back. If he has a lane, he could go. He's using the entire field. A flag 30 yards back of the play. And now the umpire, or the back judge, runs it up to the 26-yard line. There is a flag down on this return. And the reaction by Tavon Austin says it all. Yeah, West Virginia is going to get called for the hole. During the return, holding, receiving team, number nine, 10-yard penalty, West Virginia keeps the ball. 68-yard return is wiped out on the penalty by K.J. Dillon. Dana Holgerson is clearly not happy. Was it a hold? You can see for yourself. Watch number nine in white. And the thing is, yeah, right there. He, and it wasn't something that Tavon Austin actually needed at that point in time in the play. He was going to get outside once again and take it to the house. That's a shame. 
So the ball is marked at the Iowa State 36. However, it's still an impactful play by Austin. So how do you attack if you're West Virginia here? They give it to Alston. And he'll get across the 35 and spins to the 34-yard line. See on the bottom of that pile, Jeremiah George and David Irving for the Cyclones defense of Wally Burnham and Paul Rhodes. And Alston was going more to the edge that particular time. He's at his best when he just gets north and south immediately. But Geno Smith has to make plays in the passing game. And where is Stedman Bailey? I know he's down here, but does Geno Smith find it? He was looking there. A long throw, and J.D. Woods makes the grab, and it's out of bounds. And a first down. That is a difficult throw there, no? That's an NFL-style throw, and it's not only does he go through his progression, he comes off Stedman Bailey to the left, and then a long out route driven into the wind, and he's accurate, and he's on time. That's tremendous stuff. I do think one thing, Kelly, I, I've noticed the flags at the top of the stadium don't seem to be quite as crazy as they were this afternoon. Now that we're past sundown here in Ames, Iowa. You have to use Austin right there in this situation. Nobody over the top of him. Three game offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Right after he makes a fantastic NFL style throw, that's a little bit of a mistake. Is that on the quarterback? Absolutely. Always? Okay. And I think Geno Smith is trying to look for the perfect play. And a lot of times as a quarterback, when you're in rhythm and you have momentum, you just have to find a sound play that the other 10 can execute. That is certainly on Geno Smith right there. That is the ninth penalty against the Mountaineers, 85 yards. Iowa State just 5 for 43, first and 15. Quick screen. They go to Austin, and there's Klein who hurls him down. They love their wrestling in Iowa, and that was a two-point takedown. That's a gain out to the 24 of six. It'll be second and nine. This is what I think Geno Smith was trying to get to, just the quick screen, the quick throw to Tavon Austin. Nobody over the top of him and expecting to defend him from the inside, which Klein did eventually. is open underneath and there he gets it one-on-one -on -one. he's tough to beat gets by one and gets a solid collision with Jared pushing and shoving afterwards and the officials quickly able to break it up without having to throw a flag well, the beauty of having Tavon Austin in motion is eventually he becomes an incredibly dynamic outlet receiver he's not even in Geno Smith's thought right there until he needs him extremely late For it all right there. Tough Thompson incomplete. Interesting throw, interesting decision. Now fourth and three. Remember now, there's still some win here. Do you try the field goal? And that's what Ben Kern's on the field. Wow, that's a beautiful ball. And I think the young receiver and Jordan Thompson just wasn't aware of where he was on the field. The ball was there. He could have drug a foot. And I think he could have been in bounds. So Tremendous West, play. West Virginia hasn't scored a touchdown since in the second quarter, but Benton Kurt will try to give the Mountaineers the lead back. It doinked in this time. Third time we have had a field goal hit the upright. That's the first one that's gone in. West Virginia barely regains the lead. Tyler Benton Kurt giving thanks to everybody for that kick. ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. The all new Ford Fusion. Go further. And the new Droid Razor M by Motorola. That's how you have to dress, but this has been a fun football game today. There's your score and time. Whoa. You know, I'm guessing those aren't real. What do you think? Although, I'll tell you what, it helps. Everything you can do to cut the wind today and the temperatures, over 53,000 the attendance today. 14 consecutive games of over 50,000 in Ames. Paul Rhodes and his staff and his players have excited this city. 
and the state with their prospects as they try to get a seventh win, finish the regular season seven and five, and for the first time under Paul Rhodes, get four wins in the Big 12, kicking into the win. It's a short kick. But a shorter return by Albert Gary. He got out of that. That's an amazing effort. He just disappeared. Let's check. John Saunders is in our studio, John. All right, guys, thanks a lot for the AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. Shane Carden of East Carolina, what a day. Hits Danny Webster for a six-yard touchdown to tie a game at 52 apiece in overtime. Takes it himself from a yard out. Carden, 439 yards, three passing touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns as East Carolina wins. Text the word VOTE to 34763 for the AT&T All-America update. John, we just might do that after that performance. Now, let's take a look at what Sam Richardson can do here, trying to get the lead back. Right now, they go to the zone read, and West Virginia's defense ate it up. No gain on the play. Second down, James White, the ball carrier, and the other number eight in this game, Carl Joseph, raced up to make the grab. And the difference in the second half for West Virginia defensively, they're defending their run better, and so they don't have to commit another safety into that box and leave those corners exposed. West Virginia's defense has been maligned this year and at times they have deserved it. That pass caught by Chris Young, a diving grab at the 40 yard line for a gain of seven and now Iowa State trying to play fast. Second and third and three coming up. Way better than average today for West Virginia. First down, yeah, sure he can. Slide safely and look out there. As Josh Francis came flying in. Actually, if he had made contact with Richardson, that would have been 15 additional yards most likely, but it's a first down for the uh, Cyclones. And that's the game that's being played. It's all about West Virginia's safeties defensively. Where are they? And can they contain after they cover well down the field? Richardson gets off and converts once again. And he'll hand it off this time to Jeff Woody. And Woody rumbling up the middle into Mountaineer territory to the 39-yard line. Jeff Woody. Just old-fashioned football here. And Jeff Woody is really more of an attitude adjustment. You can't draw a straighter line from one point to another than <laughs> Jeff Woody runs right there. And he has it again. Time second down and eight coming up. Iowa State approaching 200 yards on the ground. This is West Virginia's opportunity defensively. Second and eight. They need to come up with some play right here. They have to defend well. Don't give yards after contact in the run, but also don't give up something in the quick passing game. Tremendous target, the tight end right there in the slot. Go the other way. High pass caught around the 30-yard line. Will be short of the first down. Third and two is next. Beginning on Monday, the two-night dancing finale event begins. Iowa's own Sean Johnson, Melissa Rycroft, and Kelly Monaco, the best of the best. Only one will win it. Who will be the first All-Star champion? Find out live Dancing with the Stars All-Stars. Two-night finale event starts Monday at 8 on ABC. That's 8 Eastern. That is a first down. No. Ball on the ground. Incomplete. Thought that West had the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Now, when you're back, the field goal kicker's got a good leg. You try to get the lead that way. Not a great throw, but certainly a throw that should have been ca caught by Jarvis West, and he just couldn't hang on, taking it to the ground right there. But So they are going to try Edwin Arceo as long as the season 51. Watch out for those goal posts again. 49 yards. Yeah, he's hit one off the, the upright as well. Brett Buecher is the holder. And back in the lead, Iowa State. On a challenging day for kickers, Edwin Arceo tucks this in. West Virginia, it's your turn.
And let's revisit Kelly Stauffer's thought about this game. I believe you said you like USC tomorrow night. I like USC tomorrow night. Okay. I like the talent that USC has, and I think that uh, Notre Dame's run of close calls comes to an end. All right, we'll find out tomorrow Without night. Without Barkley. All right, that's a bold prediction, my man. Tavon Austin will fake it and then take a knee as we will not fake a visit to the studio. Here is John Saunders. John? Well, this is the Dr. Pepper conference update, and in the SEC, LSU still has a chance to get to the championship game. They need some help. They needed to beat Arkansas. Tyler Wilson with a last chance for the Razorbacks. LSU wins. West Virginia playing for bowl eligibility here, although they do have one more game remaining at home next weekend against Kansas. This is Iowa State's final game of the regular season. They will go to a bowl game, and we'll all find that out in December. Right now, there's that little push pass to Tavon Austin. Look at the blocking downfield, and he may be gone. Austin is gone. No flags on the play. 75 yards. Wow. Speed is a beautiful thing. On it looked like there was no shot for this to go the distance, and then speed takes over with one push down the field and into the end zone later. Yeah, it looks like going for two is Dana Holgerson's decision here with 6.31 to go. Yeah, rightly so. You have the opportunity to go up by seven. The worst case scenario, you're down by five, or you're up by five. That's a career-long touchdown by Tavon Austin as a receiver. He has the ball now, trying to get to the edge for two. And did he make it? Boy, that's close. He got it. He got it. West Virginia, one play drive, 75 yards by Tavon Austin. My goodness. And watch Stedman Bailey, number three, with the block. But after a while, just stand back and watch him go. Fourth lead change of this half, and that one only took 11 seconds. Showdown Saturday on ESPN features three heated in-state rivalries at noon. The Bulldogs trying to earn their spot in the SEC title game and keep national championship hopes alive. They'll take on the Ramblin' Wreck. At 3.30, the Sooners quest for the Big 12 title continues. Bedlam against Oklahoma State. And at 7 in the Palmetto State, South Carolina, Clemson in Clemson. Oh, my gosh, 7 o'clock. What a day. That's going to be showdown Saturday at noon on ESPN and live on the Watch ESPN app. There is a squibbler. And Iowa State will get some decent field position at the 35-yard line. Well, last week, Tavon Austin was unbelievable. What he did against Oklahoma, but up until just moments ago, Iowa State, Kelly, had bottled him up. I think Iowa State did a great job with him when he was at running back. I think there was some, when he could get to the edge like he did there, motion him from the inside pos receiver position, get him to the edge, that's when he's been dynamic. Well, he is, it all it takes is one play with a talent like that. Now Iowa State's got to respond after taking one right in the solar plexus, and they go to their number one, Jarvis West, and not much there. That's what Tavon Austin did last week against Oklahoma. Yeah, that last one obviously was the touch pass, not a, a rushing attempt. But Iowa State has been great against him, but that's exactly what the defensive coordinator Wally Berman told us is the one touch effect that Tavon Austin has. Richardson, Ooh, look out there. Incomplete coverage by Pat Miller. Third down and eight coming up. And a real challenge now for the redshirt freshman Sam Richardson. He got his first start today over Steel Jantz. Jantz was uh, dinged up a little bit last week against Kansas. That gave Richardson a chance to shine for Paul Rhodes, and he did exactly that with a brilliant performance against KU, and he's been very solid here as well. And the most solid part of his game, though, has been when the pass breaks down, he's ran it. He hasn't really read things downfield very efficiently here tonight. 
Looking downfield now. He's got a little room to the left, and he's going to take it. Can he get there? We cut back into the defense, and that's it. Josh Francis and a flag. There's Francis right there. I think Francis might have inadvertently got the face mask right at the end of that play. After the play was over, personal foul, face mask, defense number four, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. How in the world is it after the play? What business do you have grabbing the face mask after the play? Great right there, and then right there, just the extra business. Yeah, he might have oh. said something. He, you know, he gets right. That is wow. the definition of getting into a guy's face. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ten penalties, 100 yards. That was unfortunate. Yeah. And Richardson on the zone read, tripped up at the 41-yard line by Carl Joseph, who saved probably 15 more yards and said it's just a gain, not just, but a gain of five, second and five coming up. Very good decision. No real tight contain right there on the quarterback zone read, and a quick decision allows Richardson to just get north and south immediately. 28 degrees outside right now. Feels like about 12. This is Chantrell Johnson with a good-looking run and a first down for the Cyclones at the 29. Joseph, another tackle for the Mountaineers. But Iowa State rolling down the field now. Gain of 13. And that undisciplined play by Josh Francis seems to have taken the life out of that defense. Someone needs to step up and make a play for West Virginia. On the zone, Reed Richardson pops loose. Another first down for Richardson down to the 13-yard line. And right now, Kelly's off for the only ones making plays for the Cyclones. Iowa State is doing such a good job up front, and then it's the simple quarterback zone read. Take the zone read outside, and the quarterback keeps it and gets up inside. Richardson, 119 rushing yards. He had 68 of the win over Kansas last week. Now to the end zone, open! The point of a no, he's out of bounds. Thought he had it. Josh Lenz thought he had it in the end zone. The official right there calls him out at second down and ten. And it was the exact same play that Lenz caught for a touchdown in the first half. The corner rolled up in the flat, and the safety late getting off the hash. And does he have the football? Absolutely not. Very good play by Cook, breaking on it and breaking it up at the very end. Yeah, that's a good call by the official. No question. He never had possession. Cook knocked it out. Second and ten. Under pressure, dumps it off. Caught by Johnson. Johnson, no, he's complete. The rule number four is an incomplete pass. Third down. And he Three officials came in motioning that the ball hit the ground, so it's third down and ten. Dana Holgerson encouraging his defense. Was this a good call, too? And just the sudden throw when the pressure gets on him quick, and yeah, absolutely, that ball bounced. Those are the things that a young quarterback has a hard time with. I'm accurate when I know when I'm throwing it, but when the defense dictates when I throw it, sometimes my feet aren't right in an inaccurate pass. 98, Will Clark and Jorge Wright, or George Wright, about 99, coming in with the pressure. Under some pressure there, near the mark, dropped, incomplete, fourth down and ten, but there's a flag down. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense number 98, evidence is to the goal, automatic first down. Another incredibly costly penalty against Dana Holgerson's Mountaineers. Yeah, Dana Holgerson absolutely can't believe how this drive has been extended by in, undisciplined plump plays by his team and the defensive end right there the near defensive end right at the bottom of the screen that hand under the face mask is exactly what the rule says and what a bad time for it. fourth first down by penalty in favor of iowa state now basic here's woody drop the ball and it's recovered by carl joseph is it a touchback? Or will they call him down at the Ooh, one? The ball is a fumble recovered by West Virginia in the end zone for a touchback. First down.
was Cook who knocks it loose. And you were talking about the two hands on the ball. The defender comes up and literally gets his helmet on the football, and Woody coughs it up. But he didn't have two hands that time. You're exactly right. And that's the first turnover of this game. And does this ball actually get into the end zone before it's recovered? You're going to see Joseph number eight. If you, I don't know how you're going to overturn that if this even under further review, under additional review, besides what has already been looked at by the replay booth. I think that ball's on the line. I'm not quite sure about that. Well, you know what? It's going to be Austin right here. That's what we're sure about, and he picks up 15. How unfortunate, but you, you talk about a sure-handed ball security back, and Jeff Woody is that guy, kind of a short yardage goal line guy that you talked about it, old school fullback, typically holds it with two hands, got a helmet right on the football. They gave him 14, all of a sudden, Tavon Austin is becoming a factor in this game, 64 yards on the ground and 99 in the air. Now, Alston, he's been terrific all day for West Virginia. He gets to just about the 40-yard line. So you're looking at a solid five-yard gain before Jake McDonough, number 94, made the stop. Second down and five. And now Iowa State's got to start worrying about their timing here, Kelly. They have two timeouts remaining. Yeah, they burned one earlier. Remember that. So they do have two. But the interesting adjustment I think Dana Holgerson made in the second half, giving the ball to Tavon Austin, which is obviously a good idea, but give it to him from the slot position when he comes in motion. Iowa State had it figured out when he was a running back. They haven't figured it out when he's out at the slot. Austin has just tied a career high with 123 yards on the ground. That's Bailey in motion. And Austin stutter step and he'll pick up one more. So he now has a career high. Klein on the stop, but here comes a timeout taken by Iowa State. They have one left. Third and four is next. 30 seconds. Our hearts beat in the face of challenge, for without it, there is nothing. No character, no grit, no goals. Without challenge, there can be nothing. No discovery, no knowledge, no cures. For us, the challenge is everything. Without it, there can be no mountaineers. <laughs> time and here's what's coming up West Virginia trying to protect that lead has third down and almost four yards to go for a first down Tavon Austin number one checks out of the middle of that three receiver formation they give it to Sean Alston trying to rip his way through the middle do you see AJ Klein number 47 arguing with the official about the spot Cleon Lang has played very well. He was actually drafted in the Canadian Football League, the number 90, but it's going to be a first down. The official coming from the far side of the field was definitely not going to give him this first down. Well, you know what? If you're ever going to challenge something, this would be the time to do it. That is going to be close and certainly a reviewable situation. The ruling of the field that the ball carrier made the line to gain is under further review. Now, he didn't say challenge. He said under further review. And the head, excuse me. The head linesman you see in that play right there was definitely not going to give him the line to gain. We will tell you about that review and whether or not he got the first down when we return. Sportsmanship on and off the field. The Big 12 Conference. All right, here's what the replay booth is looking at. First down, no first down. And initially they marked it as a first down, but according to our unofficial official yellow line, it was certainly a cross, but the hit linesman was coming in to mark it in such a way that it was going to be about two feet short. And he's the official at the top of the screen, right? The right, exactly. bare legs and the black pants that you saw. Now, here's, let me ask you this before we even know what happens. If they mark this short, do you go for it? I think sound football says you punt the ball away. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. 
Well, what a heartbreaker for Paul Rhodes in this crowd. They certainly thought that was short, but to your question, if it would have been short, I think you go ahead and punt it away. Even though it's yeah. into the wind, I think you turn it over to a young quarterback from Iowa State and force him to drive the football. And a young quarterback, you would have one or maybe even no time Exactly. So now what we're going to see, obviously, is Iowa State will take, unless something big happens for West Virginia or there's a turnover, they'll take a timeout. Geno Smith, the senior quarterback, wisely bleeding that clock. Under two minutes. And now ball security is everything for the Mountaineers, and it's ball security that cost Iowa State a chance to tie this game. Final charge timeout, Iowa State, 30 seconds. Well, let's take a look, Kelly, at our good hands play brought to you by Allstate, and it's the fumble recovery by the outstanding freshman, number eight for West Virginia, Carl Joseph, the hit by Darwin Cook, who's been outstanding, number 25, and there's eight, Joseph coming in with the fumble recovery, the only turnover we've had in this game. Yeah, and Cook has had a great night, and Joseph we haven't talked about much, but he's a dynamic talent at that free safety position, but Cook had a great night and literally put the helmet right on the ball of a guy in Jeff Woody that you never would imagine would fumble it away in that situation. Iowa State out of timeouts. And there's a stat. I'll we'll tell you after this play here, into the Paul Rhodes era, and here's Austin. He does not want to go out of bounds. He does want to get the first down. He is driven out of bounds by A.J. Klein, who's had a maniacal second half, and that is a compliment. Under Paul Rhodes, when the opponents for Iowa State score less than 24 points, they're 21 and 1. When they score 24 or more, they've only won three. The scale just tipped. Yeah, there you go, right there, 3 and 24, but now yeah. over 24 points. Wow, is that telling? And here's another one. Since the year 2000, West Virginia, when they scored 30 points or more, they've won 80 and lost only six. Three of those six losses came this season. But they're going to win, and West Virginia heads back home bowl eligible. Iowa State goes home already bowl eligible. They're, but still, this was one I'm sure they're going to look at plays. This is one that got away if you're an Iowa State coach or fan. Yeah, no question. They hand the ball to their big fullback, Jeff Woody, fully expecting ball security first and probably a touchdown. That was fairly well blocked until the low hit on Cook. But the last thing they thought would is he would put the ball on the turf. So into the cold Ames night, uh, some of the faithful now starting to check out, maybe to get some shopping done. But an end of a five-game losing streak and a big play by Tavon Austin ended up turning this game in the favor of the Mountaineers. Really well played, excellent football game. Only one turnover near the end of the game. But Dana Holgerson to get that five-game losing streak off of his back. And a lot of those guys center among them is Geno Smith. That They've had a burden for sure the last five weeks, but they finally get it done after starting such an incredible year. It fell off the edge of the earth for five weeks. Well, they were the what number five team in the, in the poll. Oh, they, haven't, uh, they haven't won a game since October the 6th. They were number five in the poll after those five weeks. They haven't been in the poll all this month. They dropped out November the 4th. So this for West Virginia really sets up a chance for them now to finish with seven wins. They're going to be a heavy favorite at home against the struggle. Kansas team, although to be fair to the Jayhawks, they are playing better. Yeah. But still, with this style of offense and this speed, gonna be tough. it is going to be hard for Kansas to win that game in Morgantown, which is a, you know, a big fan base for West Virginia, and their group is going to be excited to see their Mountaineers bowl eligible, and the end of a five-game winning streak, Iowa State drops to 6-6, six and six, and we wish them well in their bowl game. So great, there's the man who recovered the fumble. Only a freshman safety for West Virginia, Carl Joseph. But it was this amazing play by Tavon Austin that turned the tide. Our final score is West Virginia 31.